grace and peace to you in the risen Christ. I'm preaching in front of the resurrection window here at the Chatham United Methodist Church, reminding us that resurrection is always happening, not always on the calendar when it says Easter, but resurrection is always the work of God. Let us listen with the ears of our hearts to one of the resurrection accounts as Margaret reads the scriptures to us from the Gospel of John. This week's Gospel lesson comes from John, chapter 20, verses 19 to 31. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The scripture writer describes the disciples in a room that was locked. It says they were locked up because of their fear of religious authorities. But they were probably also locked up with fear of embarrassment, the fear of failure that they exhibited, the fear of vulnerability, the fear of what others might say about them, the fear of isolation, the fear of intimacy or getting too close to others or to the world, maybe even the fear of God. But those fears and those locked doors don't stop the risen Christ from coming to them and to us and greeting them and us with the words, peace be with you. The risen Christ comes not with judgment or with a wagging finger, but rather to bring peace to the disciples, to bring peace to us, to bring peace to the world, to bring peace to those who are locked up by fear of any kind. The risen Christ comes to the disciples and says more than once, peace be with you as if they didn't hear it the first time or the second time Jesus repeats to them peace be with you and then as the gospel writer of John describes 
the Johannine Pentecost, the coming of the Holy Spirit, according to the Gospel of John, Jesus, the risen Christ, breathes on the disciples and says, receive the Holy Spirit. You now have the ability and the freedom and the power to forgive or to withhold forgiveness. Do you see the significance of the first thing that the risen Christ does for the disciples is to empower them with the Holy Spirit for the purpose of forgiving one another, forgiving themselves, forgiving the churches that they will soon serve, forgiving the world for not seeing the, wor the, the, the message of the gospel. Jesus empowers the disciples and us with the Holy Spirit with the power to forgive. Forgiveness is not a gift that we bestow or withhold from others. Forgiveness is a key that unlocks a door, a key that is given to us by God to unlock a door that is locked from the inside. We have the power to use forgiveness to unlock ourselves from our own captivity to resentment, to anger, to being unsettled without peace. Lewis Smedes used to say, Forgiveness sets the prisoners free. And when we do that, we realize the prisoner has been us. Huh? Jesus came to set us free so that we might forgive those in time when we are ready. When we realize that God has forgiven us for everything we have done, and we can set ourselves free so that we can be more in the flow of love and less in the flow of resentment or anger or frustration. Forgiveness takes time. Sometimes we lift up the, the huge injustices done by monsters and try and just our, justify ourselves to not forgive because look what they did, whoever they are. I remember once leading a retreat on forgiveness and we were getting into what forgiveness is and what forgiveness isn't. And one person who saw forgiveness as giving tacit permission to those who would um, practice injustice or, or violence. He said, we, you wouldn't forgive Hitler, would you? And it's very easy for us to take those monsters and say, well, they're unforgivable, therefore I don't have to forgive someone. That's some of the games that we play. We've been thinking a lot about World War II recently as we've watched the unjust war of Vladimir Putin and Russia against the people of Ukraine. And some of my colleagues and friends in, in Ukraine and in Western Europe are seeing these images and it's bringing them back to images from the Second World War, images of bombed out uh, buildings, churches, hospitals, innocent people losing their lives to random violence and directed violence. And this is, this is an injustice of our time that we need to speak out against. Churches throughout the world need to speak out against this unjust war of Vladimir Putin and Russia. Recently, the World Council of Churches, representing hundreds of denominations in the Christian faith, have implored 
Patriarch Kirill, who is the head of the Russian Orthodox Church, to be the conscience of the state, not the enabler of the state, and to speak out against this war. And not only did Patriarch Kirill refuse to do that, but he spoke out against the West and against a culture of inclusion. There are priests and pastors and people of all denominations in Russia who are speaking out at peril of their own well-being against this war and against Putin's war uh, in, in Ukraine. We need to pray for those people of resistance within the church and outside of the church, for it takes great courage to stand up and speak out against any despot, any tyrant, any church leader. And we are grateful for those people and their faithful witness to what is right and what is just. It is a humble reminder that Christian nationalism of any country is dangerous and not of God. Christian nationalism in Russia or Christian nationalism in America, it is a slippery slope that can easily lose the spirit of the gospel. When crises like wars happen, sometimes it is just tragic. It is always tragic. War is always tragic. And we, as followers of Jesus, need to look for alternatives to wars of any kind. But in the midst of war, sometimes the Holy Spirit allows a people or individuals or groups to find a courage to be magnanimous, to be generative, to be compassionate, to be strong in the midst of injustice. And sometimes that wisdom comes through. In the Second World War, when genocide was happening against Jewish people, there was some wisdom about how to reframe this unspeakable injustice of genocide. There was a piece of paper, wrapping paper, found near the body of a dead child in Ravensbrück, where 92,000 men, women, and children were killed during the genocide, during the Holocaust. And on this paper was written this wisdom. O oh Lord, remember not only men and women of goodwill, but also those of ill will. But do not remember all the suffering they inflicted on us. Remember the fruits we have borne thanks to this suffering, our comradeship, our humility, our courage, our generosity, the greatness of heart which has grown out of this. And when they come to judgment. Let all the fruits that we have borne be their forgiveness. That wisdom can only be written from the second half of life, from a deep and wise spirit. And sometimes it takes a lifetime to get to that place, but that is the goal, to get to such a great-hearted place. I'm reminded of the witness of faithfulness that came out of the, the people and cathedral in Coventry, England. In November of 1940, Coventry was bombed unlike any other city in the, in the history of the world up until that time. 500 tons of explosions, explosive devices were dropped on Coventry in an evening. Thousands of people died and were injured. The infrastructure of the city completely destroyed. The cathedral, the ancient and beautiful cathedral in Coventry, burned up. The walls 
were left standing. And soon after the destruction of that Coventry Cathedral, the provost, Howard, of that cathedral wrote behind the altar on the wall two simple words, Father, forgive. Referencing Jesus on the cross as he's being crucified, who said, after receiving all of the violence and vitriol and injustice of Rome and the empire, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. Provost Howard didn't complete that sentence. He just said, let's write, Father, forgive. Not Father, forgive them. Not Father, forgive us. But Father, forgive. It was not a popular thing that Provost Howard did. A majority of Coventry was in no mood to forgive and was not ready to forgive. And perhaps it was too soon to even have them think about forgiveness. But he, as a Christian leader, wanted the people of Coventry to remember the core of Christianity. And that one day, the task of forgiveness would be theirs. One day. The city of Dresden in Germany was also firebombed later on in the war. I remember in the 80s worshiping with my brothers and sisters in Christ uh, week in and week out at Wesley's Cathedral in London. And some of them at lunch afterwards would tell me stories of how they survived the war sleeping in the tube, sleeping in the underground. Others told me stories of putting out fires in their neighborhood right around Wesley's Chapel. Others told me of their experience in the Royal Air Force. One guy told me that he remembers taking off near the cliffs of Dover. And when they would get to a certain altitude, they didn't need to use instruments anymore because they could just follow the light of Dresden on fire. And they would fly to Dresden and drop more bombs on the city that was completely destroyed. Tens of thousands of lives, innocent, destroyed. In war, there is need for forgiveness at the end of it all around. To this day, the Frauenkirche in Dresden and the cathedral in Coventry pray a prayer of confession together, both having lost unspeakable death and harm and grief. A few years ago, I was at the Coventry Cathedral, and I filmed a very brief clip in front of the cross and that altar and those words, Father, forgive, which are now etched into the stone of that ancient ruined cathedral. Here's the video. I'm at the Coventry Cathedral in Coventry, England. You can see the bell tower that survived the bombing during the war and the destruction that took place inside the walls of this beautiful 13th century cathedral. It has become a place of um, forgiveness and reconciliation. And we Christians need all the help we can get with people who have lived out and, and really done the work of forgiveness. Behind me is the, the cross of the Coventry Cathedral. You can see it is made out of the burned timbers from the bombed church, and behind it, it says, Father, forgive. Every Friday, this cathedral, in solidarity with Christians in the Dresden Frauenkirche Cathedral, pray together a prayer that Christians might lead the way in showing that reconciliation and forgiveness is possible. We, followers of Jesus, have been invited into this pilgrimage of trust in forgiving one another, forgiving ourselves, forgiving especially our enemies, and we need all the examples we can get. Here's one. This is a prayer that is prayed every Friday. 
the hatred which divides nation from nation, race from race, class from class. Father, forgive. The covetous desires of people and nations to possess what is not their own. Father, forgive. The greed which exploits the work of human hands and lays waste the earth. Father, forgive. Our envy of the welfare and happiness of others. Father, forgive. Our indifference to the plight of the imprisoned, the homeless, the refugee. Father, forgive the lust which dishonors the bodies of men, women, and children. Father, forgive. The pride which leads us to trust in ourselves and not in God. Father, forgive. Be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ forgave you. Friends, let us together be in prayer. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. The hatred which divides nation from nation, race from race, class from class, Father, forgive. The covetous desires of people and nations to possess what is not their own, Father, forgive the greed which exploits the work of human hands and lays waste to the earth. Father, forgive. Our envy of the welfare and happiness of others. Father, forgive. Our indifference to the plight of the imprisoned, the homeless, the refugee. Father, forgive. The lust which dishonors the bodies of men, women, and children. Father, forgive. The pride which leads us to trust in ourselves and not in God. Father, forgive. Be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another as Christ forgave you. God, may this be true in all war-torn regions of the world. May it be true in our own lives and in all of our relationships. Help us to forgive more freely, more easily, and more like Christ, so that we can be in the flow of your love. We entrust all of our prayers to you, all of our worries, all of our hopes, all of our gratitude in the name of Jesus, the risen Christ, who taught us to be bold in praying together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. May those words of confession continue to challenge us and grow us so that we might be freed up to forgive more easily more quickly and then more easily and quickly be even more in the flow of love. Today, the 24th of April, is Orthodox Easter, when Christians in Russia and Ukraine are celebrating the resurrection. Last week, our congregation, during our Easter service, at the very end, we made a videotape wishing our brothers and sisters in Christ in Russia and in Ukraine the ancient Easter greeting, Christ is risen, Christos Vaskres. Here's a glimpse of our congregation wishing a blessed Easter to our brothers and sisters in Christ, in Russia and in Ukraine. Christos 
if you are in the Chatham area tonight, we are having a very special guest, Padraig Otuma, one of the great poets and theologians of the world, who hails from Ireland. He will be speaking in our sanctuary tonight at 7 o'clock. It is a free event, but we ask that you register so that we can anticipate how many people will be here tonight. Um, he'll be speaking on poetry and prayer, and it will be a memorable event. We are still working with his publicist on whether we can videotape the event or not. Um, so there's no guarantees that we'll be able to share it with you later, but we hope that you will be able to join us tonight in the sanctuary. This coming Saturday, the 30th of April, we are having a food drive to benefit the, our 24-7 our food pantry here at the church, as well as our Chatham Community Food Distribution on Wednesdays. We are very grateful to be working with our friends at the Chatham Borough Fire Department and the Chatham Township Fire Department who are helping uh, collect food and um, organize this coming food drive. If you would like to drop off food, please bring it by the back parking lot of our church between 10 a.m. and 12 noon on Saturday, April 30th. Friends, let us go from our screens knowing that the God of love and the love of God is empowering us and equipping us to forgive more freely, more quickly, so that we can more ably and faithfully represent the Christ. The risen Christ is with us and continues to breathe the Holy Spirit on each of us. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen.